The next challenge is Poem Bop by KFB. We're given a netcat port, a docker file, and a challenge binary. This is the docker file. It's a red pwn jail. It's going to load the libraries from Ubuntu, this hash. It's going to copy over a flag file and the bop binary. Um, eventually, we will need libc. So uh, one way to grab it is just to run the docker container and copy it over. So we can do docker run interactive mount volume print working directory to the challenge directory. Uh, tag this. Cool. So now we're inside uh, uh, the Ubuntu. Then we can do LDD, run the binary. It's going to load libc from here. This is probably a sim link, which it is. And so here's libc. Um, I already have it here, uh, but this is how I copied it over. Anyways, uh, so we have the libc that's going to be used. Uh, let's take a look at the actual program. Make Ubuntu, bop. Uh, so when we run bop, it asks, do you bop? Uh, sure. And it exits. So we can do an S trace. see if anything exciting is happening uh, down here. Oh, we see some set comp, so we definitely want to look at that later. Uh, break, uh, more set comp. Write, do you bop? Yes. Uh, it reads, and then it exits. So uh, nothing too exciting. If we take a look in Ghidra, um, I already, there's two, there's a couple of functions, but none of them actually do anything. There's only two real functions uh, defined in the binary. Uh, the first one is main, so it's going to define a 32-bit or 32-byte character buffer. Uh, do some buffering. Ask if we bop. Uh, here's our buffer overflow, so we can do gets buff, and then return. Cool. We also saw there was that set comp stuff, uh, and so here's where that's defined. Um, and for reading these, it means that we're allowed to do these syscalls and only those syscalls. So normally what I do is I just copy these over and I put it in my solve script. So here's the solve script. Uh, we got uh, these ones. Then to look up the syscalls, there's a nice website that I use, um, this one by Chromium. And I just look it up. So we were given 0, 1, and 2, which is read, write, and open. And then the other two are exit and exit group. So these are the only syscalls that we get. Uh, let's also take a look at checksec. Checksec, actually, clear. Checksec, file, bop. Um, so partial rel row, so we can overwrite the global offset table. Uh, no canary, so we can easily do that overflow. And X is enabled, so we're going to be ropping and not doing shellcode. And no pi, so we can jump anywhere into the main elf section. Uh, we don't need an info leak. We still need an info leak for libc, um, if we need libc. And yeah. So if we take a look, um, or if we think about what we want to do, we are only allowed to use read, write, and open. So we can't get shell, but some, and we need to read the file on disk. So this seems like a pretty classic ROF challenge, just set up the correct registers, make those syscalls, and we should be able to read the file. Um, the one tricky thing is that there's no syscall instruction in the main uh, elf section. Um, so somehow we need to leak another library that uses syscall. And libc does have syscall, but like I said, we need to leak that address somehow. Um, so if we load it in GDB, well, so GDB, do start instruction. And let's break on main. So by default, all the libraries aren't loaded yet, but if we break a little later, uh, they will be loaded. Cool. We look at VM map. So like I said, since pi is disabled, um, these addresses are known. They're all the 400,000 in hex. Oops. Um, and these are at random addresses. So we want libc so that we can get that syscall gadget. Um, let's see what we have available in the global offset table. We have the set comp, which we don't really want. Set buff. No. Print F. Maybe we could. No, actually, never mind. No, we can't. Uh, but we have print F and gets. Um, thankfully, these are enough to leak libc. Um, if we look at the solve script, um, actually, what we're going to try to do is we're going to find a place in memory that isn't being used. We're going to write the string percent %p, percent %p, percent %p, percent %p, percent %p to that address using gets. And then we're going to call printf on that string to leak a bunch of variables on the stack. And hopefully one of those variables on the stack is an address within libc. 
And then once we have the address to libc, we can rop again and do the read, write, and open and everything. Um, to see what that actually looks like, uh, so we have empty address. Uh, we're going to write it here. Um, I just picked a random location. I look at the memory segments that have both read and write, and here's the first one. Uh, some data segment. Um, so we're going to write there. Uh, we calculate this is the offset for doing the buffer overflow. So you can do just pwn cyclic the first time and say like 100, and then see uh, what it catches on. Um, and for this on this uh, Ubuntu, it caught on KAAA, so we know what the offset is. Um, then there's the return gadget. So I like to find just a random ret. So I like this one right here and just copy that address. Sometimes you need it for stack alignment, um, like printf and a couple of the other libc functions on the latest version of libc uh, just require the stack to be aligned on a, a zero. Then there's the main address, because eventually we're going to jump back. So again, you can get this in Ghidra and just come here, copy that. So we have the main address and some pop RDI. Uh, you can get that from Ropper. Uh, I don't think I have it installed by default. So you do, let's see, Ropper. Nope. So we're going to do pip install Ropper. And then we'll do Ropper file bop. Cool. And we need a pop RDI. Here's one. So now we have a pop RDI gadget. Cool. So like I said, um, we're going to pick an arbitrary location. We're going to write percent %p, uh, percent %p a whole bunch of times um, to that location. Then we're going to call printf on that location. So to put that into uh, ROP code, uh, we're going to use pop RDI because this is what uh, gets and printf expect. That empty address that we found, and then we're going to call gets on it. And so that means the program is going to wait for our input, and we can input uh, some stuff that would be useful. Um, I think when I ran this locally, I needed 13% Ps until I found something interesting. But I run it remotely. There's actually the first thing on the stack is uh, a libc leak. So I only do 1% P here. Um, and then I'm also going to write flag.txt, which will be useful later. Um, so uh, the gets is going to wait till our next input, which is this one. And then we're going to do pop RDI again for that empty address. So we're moving printf to be pointing right here. And so we're going to call printf on this percent %p, which will then print the first address on the stack. And we'll grab that. And now we have our libc leak. Um, so this is where we get the libc leak. Uh, right here, dbop. Um, I'm just doing some splitting. And then here, uh, I had a question about this last time. Um, so we know that whatever value is on the stack, it's going to be a it's going to be random, somewhere random, but it's going to be a known offset from the base of libc. And so what we're doing is this is a previous leak. And this is during that previous leak, this was where the base of libc is. So when I calculate this, like ideally, I'm just being lazy. Really, I should just put this in here. This is where that offset is. So the address we leak is this far away from the base of libc. Um, I just like to leave it in there because I like to know what the addresses kind of look like. Um, but anyways. Really, we're just saying that this is the offset to the base of libc. Um, and so then I print the libc address. Um, you can like, I mean, it's not a good validation, but if it ends in like three zeros, then you know that you probably got the, the right uh, base address. Cool. So now we have a leak to libc. And now that we have that, we can get a syscall gadget. So again, you can call wrapper uh, file uh, libc. Mm, that's not right. libc2. Uh, this is going to take a while. Um, I usually just, since it takes so long, I dump it to file, and then I look for what I, I need. Um, but we have the syscall gadget, and now we can start ROPing within libc. And like I said earlier, we, at the very end of our first ROP chain, we jump back to the main address. So we're going to do that whole do you bop chain again. Anyways, uh, so we found a syscall gadget. Um, like I said, I, I dump it to file. So libc ropper syscall ret. So there's one here. Um, and you can ignore the rest. Uh, I think eventually if Ropper splits them out. Uh, you'll just have to believe me. Um, there's, there's definitely one in there. Um, then we're going to uh, set up the registers correctly. So this is for the syscalls to open a file, read a file, and write a file. Uh, so the syscall to open is OX2. We're going to pass in the flag address. So actually, I'm going to stop this. It's going way too slow. Um, the flag address. The flag address is calculated up here. So it's empty address, that address we were writing to, plus 8. Uh, and you can see, like I said earlier, 
Um, I said we write flag.txt because we're going to need it later. So I just copy this location so that we can open the file. Um, so we have a address that contains the word flag.txt. So we're going to open that. We set these two to zero. Again, you can get uh, the details of what the syscalls are supposed to look like from that Chrome page. Uh, here, so we can see we need RDI to be the F. So oh, we're doing open. So RDI needs to be the file name. RSI needs to be flags and mode. For reading, both of these are zero. Cool. So we open a file. Um, this I'll talk about in a second, but this just has to do with FDs. If we were running this locally, um, normally here you do RD equals three, since the next file descriptor is three. But since it's running in one of those red pwn jails, um, the next file descriptor is not three. I think remotely on this one it's ten. Um, which can be a little bit troublesome if you're not used to them because uh, you feel like it, the code should be working because it worked locally, but the red pwn jails are a little bit strange. Anyway, so we're going to call read. So we're going to read from that file. Uh, what this is doing is it's copying... Uh, doo -doo -doo. It's moving EAX. So after we call the open call, um, EAX contains the file descriptor number for the file we just opened. Like I said, it's probably 10. Most of the time I, I just fuzz this, but this time there actually was a gadget to do it for me, so I use the gadget. It's going to copy EAX into EDI, which is what we need. It does some like compare stuff and jump, but this doesn't actually get called. And it's also going to move R8 to RAX, but we don't even care about that either, so we just kind of ignore these. So the only thing we really care about is this, and then it returns. So that's going to populate RDI with our file descriptor. Um, then we're going to do RSI. Uh, we just need a buffer to read into. So it's going to read from file and put it at the flag address. And we want to read 50 bytes hex. Cool. And then we're going to write the contents of that buffer to standard out. So this is the syscall. This is the uh, RDI is uh, the address, sorry, the system out address or standard out. Then RSI is that buffer that has the, the, the flag. And then we're going to write 50 bytes of hex. And then we'll call syscall. Uh, sys call. Then we do a return gadget. We don't actually need this. We could just exit, but um, it's nice to have a, another execution just to make sure useful for debugging. Um, if it goes back, and then you know at least it's correct, just something in here was wrong. Um, and then, yep, we send off our payload, and we do interactive. Um, it's tricky to run it locally. The locally, like I said, it's different printf addresses and offsets, and I deleted them, but uh, we can run it remotely. Uh, so it should just be Python 3 solve. Uh, loading gadgets for libc. Yeah. Um, cool. There is the flag. So uh, if we look at what happened, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times four, 24 bytes. Then we sent uh, some payload. This is our first ROP chain. And this is going to make the gets and printf call. This was that where we're setting that buffer to percent %p flag text at address like 4, 450 or something like that. Um, this is our second ROP chain. So we're going to fill in the buffer. Here's the buffer overflow. And this is where we do the open read and write calls. And then on the end of the write call, it'll write out that buffer, which was the flag. And there's the flag. So uh, pretty fun challenge. Um, yeah, see ya.